What is up, guys? I'm super excited about today's episode. I've got Nathan, the CEO of Free Up on the e commerce empire builders channel. Nathan, welcome. Peter, thanks for having me. I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, so guys, you know, you already know how much I already promote Free Up on this channel. And if you did not know, Nathan is the CEO. So we're going to be going over a ton of awesome tips for hiring out people for your e-commerce businesses. But as you guys know, I love to start with doing a backstory of these successful entrepreneurs. So Nathan, if you don't mind sharing your backstory, how you got to the position that you're in today. Yeah, so I started off as a broke college kid looking for extra beer money on the side. And my parents were both teachers. And so I always had the mentality that I would go through college, get good grades, get a real job, work for 40 years, retire and all that. But I, they always forced me to get summer jobs, internships, I was working 40 hours a week since I was 16 and, and I got really a glimpse into the future and I want to do everything possible to avoid that. Mm -hmm. So when I was in college, I started buying and selling textbooks, trying to circumvent the bookstore, um, give back more money than they were paying out. And before I knew it, I had lines out my college dorm room's door of people trying to sell me their books so much so that the school actually sent me a cease and desist letter to <laughs> knock it off. <clears throat> So that was my first glimpse into being an entrepreneur and books eventually led me to Amazon and I tried to sell everything from outdoor equipment and sport equipment to computers, DVDs, video games. And I just failed over and over. The only thing that I could sell was books. And it wasn't until I branched out of my comfort zone and found these deals on baby products that I started to have a lot of success on Amazon. So if you can imagine me as a 20 year old single college guy, drop shipping baby products on Amazon, that was me. And this business exploded. I got in really early, 2008, 2009, um, back when Amazon was transitioning from a bookstore to everything else. So I was thrown into the fire. I, we did a million dollars in the first year and all of a sudden I have to pay taxes, right? So I meet with an accountant and he says, when are you gonna hire your first person? And I kind of shrugged it off. Like, why would I do that? The money's going into my pocket. I don't want to teach someone else. I can't do it as much as, as well as I can on and on with excuses. And he just laughed in my face and he goes, okay, kid, you're going to learn this lesson out on your own. Well, my first real busy season comes around um, with the business running at full steam and I just get destroyed. I'm working 20 hours a week. It's drop shipping. So I'm answering every email, filling every order, I'm working 20 hours a day, no social life. I grades going down the tube and somehow I make it out to January and I'm thinking I can never let this happen again. So I make my first hire a college kid by the name of Connor and he's been my business partner for eight years. So I make a really good hire right from the beginning. So I think this is easy. This is great. I proceed to make bad hire after bad hire after bad hire, wasting my time, my money, my energy. And I quickly realized that college students, we're not ideal hiring long term, um, but I also couldn't hire these 30 year old geniuses. I mean, no one wanted to work for me. I was 21. So I got thrown into the remote hiring world, the Upworks, the Fivers, and all of a sudden my time shifted from what I liked doing, which was the expansion, expanding the business, getting new manufacturers, marketing, to the stuff I didn't like doing, which was going through 100 applicants every day to find what I wanted. And that's really when the idea for Free Up started. Um, where I would get faster access to talent. And when I couldn't find a marketplace like that, I built it myself. So that's a short version. <laughs> no, I love that. It's very similar to me. Like, you know, broke college kid starts making some money online, you know, and it's like the epiphany that you have. Like, holy crap, there is, you can actually make money online? Like, it's it's insane. It's it's fantastic. Um, your story is better than mine. I got banned on Amazon, like, right after graduation. Oh, yeah. We're doing so well. But uh, besides that, so uh, let's get right into it because. I preach outsource as honestly outsource as quickly as you can because the faster you can get at least like an initial hire in if even if you're on the ground floor of your business that person can grow with you right they can grow with your business so let's start off like why should people outsource right and secondly because you always hear this saying and it's like hey they're not gonna do it as good as me right why should I outsource? I might as well do it on my own and trust me I felt that way in the beginning with some bad first hire so I just want to get your take on that yeah, so there are people on my team that do stuff way better than I do. In fact, almost everyone. It's gotten <laughs> to the point where I only hire people that are better than me. I mean, I'm very good at, at specific things. I'm good at building processes. I'm good at sales. I'm good at certain creative things, coming up with ideas. And I'm great at customer service and, and client retention. And outside of that, the bookkeeping, the graphic design, the, the digital marketing, 
I mean, if I if I spend any time in that, it, it's a total waste. Besides just managing it, and making sure we're not spending too much money or whatever it is. But I mean, for me, the right time to hire or the or the mentality of hiring is so important. I mean, if I'd started doing it early on, I know I would have had more success. It's, it's really been the key to my success has been surrounding myself with good people. And I always tell people to think of it in three different levels. You've got the basic level freelancer, that five to 10 bucks an hour, non-US. If you're caught up in your day-to-day -day operations, your systems, your processes, they're great to plug them in to follow. Mm -hmm. You got the mid-level people. These guys are specialists, the graphic designers, bookkeepers, content writers. You're not teaching them how to do what they do, but they're also not consulting with you. You're hiring them to take stuff off your plate, do, the, do it at a high level. And then you got the experts, the 25 and up, who can consult, they can audit your business, they can create game plans and execute, they can project manage, they can help create systems and processes. So when you think of it like that, you, you always figure out where does your business fall? Are you revenue positive and you have so much going on but you're you're just stuck in your business? Are you just trying to figure out what's how to get your business to the next level or are you stuck? Because then it doesn't make sense to plug a day-to-day -day operation person in. You need an expert to really come in. Or you just have this huge to-do list of stuff that's not getting done, you have to hire those mid-level people for. Yeah, so like somebody that's listening now or watching like a brand new e-commerce business owner, like what like what would be like that first hire that you would have them bring? Because a lot of people are like they're like twenty five dollars an hour. I can't I can't pay somebody that, you know. So like look for because you have a lot of data for on, on businesses. Like what if you see is like that good initial first hire for somebody to bring on, like a, as soon as possible. So it's very business dependent. For Amazon, a lot of times, I'll recommend hiring that expert because a lot of times it just doesn't make sense to do elsewhere because if you're going, let's say you're going full full forward with a product launch, mm -hmm. just having that expert in your back pocket with everything that Amazon can throw at you at any given time is huge. And, and even if you hire someone for two hours, just review what you're doing and tell you not to do this or say, hey, go in this direction, that could save you thousands of dollars down the line. So even if you don't hire them 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week, just getting that initial consultation and having them in your back pocket, if you do get a listing suppress or Amazon throws something at you and you're not sure of it, then you could spend two weeks fixing it is huge. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times if you're not revenue positive or you're not um, profit, you're not profitable or you don't have a constant revenue stream, uh, the expert really is the way to go unless you're at the point where you're like, hey, I have everything. I just need this this listing optimized. That's the final step. And then you can push it through. Wow. So, I, yeah, that's like – that's really good because I never thought of it that way. I always was like, you know, like hire maybe, you know, somebody that can fulfill orders for you, somebody that can do like the emails and stuff, take that stuff off of your plate. Right, but I love the idea of you know hiring basically a consultant that can just look over the work that you're doing, you know, making sure that you're on the right track to actually be successful. Somebody that can you know spend, you might spend you know a hundred dollars or you know fifty dollars for an hour of their time to look over your you know your product page on Amazon, for example, and that could honestly save you you know God knows how many hours in, in the long run, right? Um, yeah, and if you're like me, and I, I tend to do things a little bit differently, I, I like to do a lot of trial and error. I mean, mm -hmm. back when I started Amazon, there were no courses and no gurus anyway, so that was really the only way to go about it. But what I did is I created a very cheap lead generation team. That was my first hire. And I created some sales pitches. I did split testing, and I would have them reach out to manufacturers. Hey, will you let me sell your product on Amazon? Will you mm -hmm. get on the phone with me? And it would cost me 20, 25 bucks a day but after a while, I built up all these relationships. I had all these people in the back pocket, and then it was like, okay, now I can hire some talented people to really execute that plan. So there's a lot of different things you can do with cheap talent that's more mm -hmm. in that trial and error phase, as long as you're not afraid to throw, to wait, not waste money, but you're gonna lose money here and there. I always invest in a lot yeah. of different things. Whatever works, you put more money into. Whatever doesn't work, you pull back. Yeah, so the thing is like, a, a lot of the audience here will be, um they're typically starting out drop shipping. So they're doing like kind of low level tasks like fulfilling orders or answering customer service emails. So typically that's like something good to outsource fairly quickly because that could eat up two, three hours of your day. You know what I mean? So if somebody's looking for somebody like that, what's kind of like the onboarding process that they would, you know, bring somebody like that through? Because I think that's like one common mistake people have is they'll hire a VA, like let's say they'll use a different site besides FreeUp, 
And I've had I've experienced this a few times in the past where it's like you go through VA after VA through VA and you're like, man, like I, nobody's getting it. And you know, a lot of people get frustrated. And they're like, you know what, this doesn't work for me or my business. I I can't have you know virtual assistants. So like, what's your what's like a good onboarding process to bring when you're bringing new talent? It doesn't have to be a VA. It could be you know really any anybody that you're going to bring onto your team. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. If you're get if you're at the point where you're getting consistent orders and getting consistent emails, mm -hmm. absolutely get that off your plate first because you want to focus on big picture stuff and expansion. So this is the process that I go about, and it's all about valuing your time. What takes up the least amount of your time? So I just hired a VA recently to handle my emails, which is very similar to if you hire someone to run you know, the customer service for your Amazon business. So I created a document, and my document is 80, 80 pages long. So I've been building it for three years. Yours will probably be three to four pages long. So before, after I've hired them and I chose them, whether you use free up or whatever it is, before I spend any time or invest any uh, money, or before I invest any of my time into working with them, I'll pay them to just go through and read these documents. And I'll, I'll encourage them to ask me any questions they have, and I'll answer them, and I make my team available to them as well. But after the day, or in my case, three days, however long it takes them to get through it and understand it, I'm gonna ask them questions. I'm gonna quiz them. I'm gonna make sure they actually understand this document. And mm -hmm. if they do, great, we'll proceed forward and then I'll start to invest my time into them. If they don't, I'd much rather pay someone for two days and scrap it and start over with someone else than invest my time into someone and just cross my fingers and hope that one day they wake up and get it two weeks later because that's the kind of stuff that sets your business back. Mm -hmm. Now, with emails in this document, what I did was I brainstormed every different type of email that I get for, for free up its partnerships, clients, freelancers, issues for your Amazon business or e-commerce e business, could be returns, people asking for tracking number, people having product questions. And then I created trees. So it's like, hey, if this person asked this, do this. And then I also created a list of, these are things that you leave for me, especially when you're new. So super irate customer you don't want them handling that on week one so they leave it for you for um you and i also schedule their shifts so it kind of coincides with me so i'll have someone that works from 4 to 6 a.m so when i wake up all the easy emails are gone and they just leave a message hey nate check out email a b and c and i can just go through it and as i'm going through it i learn i use that as a learning opportunity to teach them that next level of email and then once i'm comfortable with them there that next level and that next level until you get to the point where they can pretty much handle anything mm -hmm. yeah and that's kind of i think what a lot of people struggle with is you have to be like patient you know sometimes with with like when you hire somebody it's just like you know if somebody started you know a full-time job now right you're not going to get it all in that first week right give the person your documentation that you have and give them some time with it to actually learn the process and you know really follow the work but specifically like as far as documenting your pro your processes that you have that you're going to outsource, like how do you specifically go about that? You kind of hinted on the emails, which I love. That's something I always tell people. Like nine times out of ten in e-commerce, emails it's going to be templated stuff where you can just like replace the person's name, right? But as far as like the other kind of portion, do you ever like do like maybe like video templates? Do you like sit with them their first day that and, and like be there actively if they have any questions or any sort of tips there? So I personally am against doing video only because I still consider free up a startup and our run rates around 9 million and our processes mm -hmm. are constantly changing. So the average startup, your systems are constantly being improved, constantly changing. The second you make a video, they just become outdated a month later and you can spend all, all this time just creating video after video after video where a document, you can just adjust it. You can change some words, you can add new sentences. In. It's much easier. I found that it's more efficient if you have an order placement process that's set in stone and it's gonna be like that for six months to a year, absolutely make a video. I've just found that over time, my processes tend to change fairly quickly and, and improve. Um, with the document, I, I always kind of keep a structure of lay everything out at the beginning. And I think a lot of people miss out on that. They go into boom, step one. And the person reading it is like, whoa, what am I doing? What am I trying to do? What, what are the goals? What, what do I need to know? And they're just being thrown into the fire right away. So I try to establish everything from the beginning. This is how long we've been in business. This is what we're doing well. This is what we're not doing well. This is why we brought you here. These are the expectations, like this many, um, this many orders per hour or this many emails. Um, I also add in, hey, just because we said this is the process, 
doesn't mean that it's the process forever. Once you get good at it, I want you to bring your ideas to the table to help make it faster, help make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. So I, I establish everything from the beginning and then I go into the steps and with the steps, I always want to tell why we're doing each thing. So it's like, hey, double check that the pricing is correct here because in the past we've had issue where, where we send products and lose money and just putting whys behind different things makes people remember it and it makes people actually want to listen to it. Very few people want to just be bark orders and just say, oh, I don't, I don't care why we do it, I'll just do it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I structure it. And at the end, I, I wrap it up and I summarize the very important do's and the very important don'ts. So that it's very clear for them and, and they kind of have those cheat sheets at the end. Yeah, I kind of, I've done that with all of my VAs just naturally, like pretend you're a bigger business than you are, like indoctrinate them, be like, hey, you know, maybe have your brand story, explain to them, like welcome them to your to your team. Don't just go in there and be like, hey, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. But um, let's say there's someone on here uh, that's probably, let's say they're hiring somebody on, they're only logging in a few hours a week. That's all they really can afford. Maybe once a day, they'll log in for an hour. When you're structuring like this, this kind of like master document, or from what you've seen with other e-commerce business owners, do, are, are they having like daily tasks that this person is kind of completing on a, on a daily basis? Like, oh, check emails, check orders, and so on and so on, and then get back to me when it, this is complete? Or kind of like, what's your kind of communication between your VAs to make sure they're actually doing the work every day? You know what I mean? Like, you want to make sure, hey, did you fulfill orders today or, or not? So I'd, I'd be curious to know. How yeah, I make it like a checklist and they update me at, at the end of everything. And, and if I assign a new thing that comes up, a new task, because we all know in the entrepreneurship world, things just pop up. Mm -hmm. I always, I ask them for confirmation when stuff is done. So on the free up side, if I'm like, hey, reach out to this freelancer and tell them X, Y, Z. And the second they do it, they just say, they copy what I wrote and they just say, hey, this has been done. So mm -hmm. it's just a mental checklist. And once you build trust, you sometimes don't even need that. And once you get out of that, hey, I can only afford an hour or two a day of someone and, and you get more of those full-time people, I like to break it up into day-to-day -day tasks, short-term projects, long-term projects. Mm -hmm. And I'll divide it up because there, there are ups and downs. There might be a Friday afternoon when, when it's slow and we're not getting orders, but I have important things that I want them to do that's pushing the business forward. And the more that they can just chip away at those long-term and short-term projects, and, and I try to put due dates on them as well, the more my business will move forward. So I, I like to start off by saying, get your mornings back because if you can get someone on in the morning to just get you caught up in the first few hours of the day, then you have the rest of the day to focus on expansion. But then after that, once you expand, focus on those short-term and big-term projects as well. So like specifically, like just so people know if they're like really brand spanking new, like what tools are you using? Like are you using Google Docs, Google Drive, Slack, Trello? Like how kind of, like what kind of system of tools are you using for this like all, managing all this essentially? So I, I really like to practice what I preach and show how simple it is. So first of all, I only hire freelancers from FreeUp. Um, Me too. The same so. people that are available <laughs> to uh, other clients. We, we have no employees, it's my business partner, Connor and I and these freelancers. And we use three things, actually four things if you include developers. So we use Skype. I, I recommend getting really good at Skype. It's the best way to communicate. It's been the best way for a while. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, we use Trello to keep track of the day-to-day, short-term, long-term projects. We use Google Docs to keep track of um, any Excels, numbers, um, profits, all that kind of stuff, um, along with the documents, the onboarding documents. And then for developers, we use a program called Jira, which is a fancy Trello that for whatever reason they, they really like and it's made them very, very efficient. So that, that's really what I use in order to manage right now a 40 person team. Wow, I, did, I didn't realize that that's all you guys use. So it's you and your business partner and then you literally just have freelancers that you're, you're hiring from free up. Yeah, and, and we don't only use like Filipino freelancers. We have a, a US guy who costs 75 bucks an hour and crushes our Facebook ads. You've got yeah. bloggers who in the US that write for our blog. So it's a combination of a lot of different people. Yeah, so actually give people a little bit of structure because honestly, like guys, like if you've never been to FreeUp, even though I've told you guys, go check out FreeUp many times, um, it's so different. And that's why I love it so much is because you basically pre-vet people on there. Right? These are not just like Upwork applicants that might n have never done the actual job that they, they claim they did. Right? You're kind of pre-vetting people. They have to go basically apply to work for you. Right? So I'd be curious like, to just let people know who have never worked with FreeUp. Maybe these people only did like Fiverr or Upwork and like how you compare and how your structure is of, of these, uh, these employees here. 
Contractors. Contractors, yeah. So Contractors. what's really cool is I've used every other marketplace. So I tried to take everything that I liked about them and change everything that I didn't. And we're constantly looking for feedback too on how we can improve. So we get about a thousand applicants a week to try to get onto the free up platform and offer their services. And we reject 99 out of every 100 applicants, taking the top 1% based on not only their skill, but their attitude and their communication as well. We look for people who are passionate about what they do. They're not just in it for the paycheck. I mean, I'm sure you hate bookkeeping, I hate bookkeeping. If we had a bookkeeper to the marketplace, they have to love bookkeeping as much as I love being an entrepreneur. Those are the type of people that we look for. Um, and then on the communication side, I've had every bad communication experience imaginable. We have 15 pages of communication best practices that they have to memorize and get tested on before they're allowed to offer their services. From there, once they're in, clients get fast access to them. You submit a request, it takes 30 seconds. We fill it within a business day, usually faster. You can interview them, make sure you like them. If you do, you click hire and you're good to go. If you don't, you can click pass and, and provide us feedback and we'll get you someone else based on that feedback. We have freelancers from five to $75 an hour on the back end. My calendar is right on top of the website and it's not going anywhere. You can book a free meeting with me if you ever wanna to talk to me, I'm pretty easy to contact. But I also have a team of people that monitor my Skypes and emails 24 seven. So if I'm on a podcast or sleeping or off or whatever it is, you always have someone to talk to right away. Um, and then on the back end of that, we also have a no turnover guarantee because I know how frustrating it is to put time and effort into someone and have them walk away. Rarely happens with us. Of course, it's real life. It's, uh, there's always a chance. If it does, we cover all replacement costs and get you a new person right away. So that's really what we're all about. Oh, and yeah, it's, it's amazing also like how many services you guys offer now. Like when I was recently on this, is on your page hiring um, some assistance for me, it's like you can literally, you guys have like, if you want somebody, let's say do Shopify product pages, you guys even have like a click funnel section I saw there now. Like if so you want people to build you out, you know, a funnel or write you copy, like if you want, could you give a rundown like some of the e-commerce centric stuff? Like if, if you need, like say you want to launch a Shopify store, or say you want to launch on Amazon, like you have those kind of people out there that have experience who can do that for a business owner, right? Yeah, it, it's kind of cool because when we started this, we were like, hey, we know a lot of Amazon sellers. They all have the same issue with the Upworks and the Fivers. Let, let's just create a marketplace for Amazon sellers. Mm -hmm. And once once we did that, all of a sudden they started telling their Shopify friends and their eBay friends. So we're getting requests for all sorts of e-commerce. So year two, we're, we're, we're expanding our recruitment and focusing on them. Well, all of a sudden year three, we're getting marketing agencies and real estate agents mm -hmm. and software companies. So we, we've really expanded it to all skill sets we still, we don't mess with like fake reviews or anything against terms of service or anything like that. But if it's a real skill set, we either have it or we'll recruit for it for you free of charge and add it to it as a new, new skill set. So wow. sometimes we expand just because people say, Hey, I want someone that's an expert in cryptocurrency. Well, we don't have that. We're honest about it. Would you like us to recruit free of charge? No pressure to hire anyone that we get you. They say yes. And boom, now we have a bunch of freelancers that are in cryptocurrency. So, I mean, anything from customer service to data entry, lead generation, um, listings, graphic design, photography, video editing, um, PPC on Amazon, Google, Facebook, um, building Shopify stores, um, I got product sourcing, Chinese product sourcing, um, any kind of funnels like you mentioned. Um, man, I can go on and on. There's a there hundred skills plus that we offer. Yeah, and uh, so kind of going back to um Let's say somebody heads over to going out on freeup.com right now. What are like some tips when you're actually, because you want to write a good like job description for what you're looking for. Like some people just go on there and be like, hey, uh, looking for the cheapest possible person they can find. And they're writing this huge, I've seen job description where they're like, it, they're expecting their VA to do literally everything. They're like, I'm not paying any more than $4 an hour for this. I'm like, what? <laughs> so what are some tips for uh, actually writing good job description so you actually get qualified applicants? Yeah, hashtag titles don't matter. Don't, <laughs> don't get caught up in what you call someone. If they're a project manager, virtual assistant, customer service rep, focus on what they'll actually be doing. What are the tasks? What are they responsible for? What are, what are the expectations? What kind of skill sets do you need them to have? That's how you build that ideal job description. And I also encourage people to not put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, mm -hmm. if you've ever heard me on a podcast, I tell a story about how I did put my eggs in all in one basket. I hired one person to run everything because I was stressed out of my mind. 
I spent six months training them. And this was after a series of bad hires. So I finally found someone I like, taught them how to do everything, went on this vacation to Myrtle Beach, first vacation in a year. And on the first day, the guy quits on me and six months of training just down the drain. And I actually did the same thing at the time with a manufacturer and put all my eggs in one basket there. So I learned that lesson early on, departmentalize. Get, if you, instead of hiring one 40 hour week customer service person, hire 220 because no one works every day in a year. People are gonna need time off. You don't wanna get randomly thrown into customer service. So really try to departmentalize as much as you possibly can and, and don't necessarily look for that unicorn VA. It seems good from the outside, but a lot of times that can really set back businesses if your entire business is relying on that one person. Oh no, absolutely. I've definitely been burned by that. And uh, and that, like, that should be a clear expectation, guys. Like. When you hire your first person, it's not necessarily always going to be like a slam dunk. You know, you sometimes it takes time to go through. I think honestly, you guys have perfected it. As like I can tell you, I've went through dozens when I was using like Upwork to try and find a VA that was like competent in everything that I was you know hoping to you know bring them up to speed on. As compared to Free Up, where a lot of these people, I'm I'm like they'll hit the ground running. Like they've already have experience in a lot of the things that I'm showing them, and if they can hit the ground running within a week or so, they're not asking any questions, and you can you know put some more tasks on them, and you know give them some more hours to work with every single week. And, and yeah, and when you have to remember with these freelancers, is it's really a business to business relationship. I mean, these are freelancers that are looking out for themselves. They're building a client base, portfolio of clients. They're perfecting their skills. They're perfecting their services, their offerings. And they're, they're trying to keep their reputation intact and make sure they do a good job for you. So it's a little bit different than if you were just hiring someone to come full time in your office. These people know what they're doing. They have years of experience in the e-commerce space, at least if they're offering their e-commerce service on free up and you're going to be able to work with them a lot faster and have higher a higher set of expectations than if you just hired that data entry worker from onlinejobs.ph and you have to teach them what Amazon is from the ground up. Yeah. So that leads to a good question because I know a lot of people I've been asked this is like how do you handle and I'm curious to know your take on this. Like how do you cuz they some of these VAs that you're going to work with or people that are just, you know, work contracted with you they're handling a lot of sensitive information, you know, customer data. They have basically your customer email lists if they want to. They have maybe credit card information. They have emails and passwords to all your social media accounts. Like, what's your strategy with that? Like, and kind of keeping your your business secure, essentially. Yeah. So the first thing is the mentality because you always hear the horror stories and people are scared to hire. The fact is, you have to hire if you want to grow your business to the next level. It's the only way. There's mm -hmm. very few five million dollar year businesses that are solo one man operations. It just really doesn't exist. And if you're out there doing that, props to you. Um, but it, it's so hard to get into the free up network. I mean, we take one out of every hundred applicants. Once they're in, they care a lot more about growing their freelance business and staying in the network and getting more clients from us than they do about stealing or jeopardizing your information. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always a risk. Even if you hire your best friend to sit right next to you eight hours a day, always a chance that they're gonna do something stupid and jeopardize your business. But with FreeUp, we've been doing this for three years. I've been hiring for eight years and I've never had a serious issue. We bill over 12,000 12, hours a week and we've never had a serious issue. And I'm sure if we keep growing and, and billing hours, eventually something will happen. That's just the percentages, but it's a lot smaller than you think. So mm -hmm. getting the mentality that it's not the norm is huge, but then there's the other side of it. Do things to protect you. Have a LastPass account. Build relationships with people, which is really the key. Don't just hand them over your bank account information on day one. You can give them access over time. You can ask them how their family's doing and build long-term relationships where you're not just barking orders with them. That is the real way that you keep your information secure. I had a VA, which rarely happens to me. It just happened to happen today where it just wasn't a right fit. She was a super smart person, good at some things, wasn't a fit. I had another person lined up, so it was fine, but we left on fantastic terms. I mean, I'm really good friends with her. I'm still going to be in contact with her. And she wouldn't think twice about jeopardizing anyone's information. And that's the kind of relationship you should be trying to build with these people for so many reasons, not just stealing the information, but turnover is incredibly expensive. 
anything that you can do to reduce turnover is huge. And the key to reducing turnover and the key to keeping your information secure is building those relationships. I always tell people that I'm like, you know, like during Christmas time or during holidays, like give them a gift card, you know, have some sort of, you know, bonus for them or don't just ask them how their family is doing and really create that kind of, you know, an actual pretend like they're a real employee sitting next to you. You know what I mean? Like, so they feel more welcome. They're not just, they don't feel like, hey, you know, you're just always constantly just hounding them with, hey, do this, do this. Hey, did you get that done yet? Did you get that done yet? You know, but I'm curious. So. Let's say somebody has their applicants. I, I think with FreeUp, you usually give one or two applicants when somebody applies uh, and they see these applicants come in. What's your recommendation for vetting these people out? Do you recommend people like jump on a call with them or co good questions to ask to make sure that that's a good fit? Sure, so I mentioned we're vetting them for skill, attitude, and communication. What you should be trying to do is figuring out, is this person the right fit for me? Because even the best freelancer in the world are not the best fit for every single client in the world. So you, your question should be very focused on that. And it could be as simple as, hey, I'm very, I'm, I move very fast, I'm very blunt, I'm like a very logical person, which is exactly what I am. And, and I tell people that upfront because if someone is incredibly emotional or, or someone can't handle that kind of directness, they're not the right fit for me, but they might be a great fit for a hundred other clients out there. So mm -hmm. a lot of my questions I'll go over Hey, like these are the hours I need. Can you make that commitment? Can you do it long term? Tell me about your background and how it relates to this. But a lot of my questions are also just, hey, this is about me. This is how I like to work. This is my system. This is how I communicate. Can you handle it? And let's say I do want to hire that person. I set really high expectations up front. I actually have a client expectations doc you can download on the free up blog. I'll hand them that, have them read it, go through it, make sure they're on the same page. And I'll give them a chance to back out because if they see my expectations and they're like, whoa, I don't know if I could handle this, I'd much rather they back out then than two weeks in and waste two weeks of my time that I'm never going to get back. No, I love that. So where can they get that? The Because I didn't, see, I haven't seen that. It's on your the free up blog, client expectation spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, I'll send you a link to it too that you can put with it. Awesome. So, um, so real quick, I know we're heading up on time here, but. I want to ask you, like, what's the most common thing you see, like, reason people are giving uh, why they're not outsourcing out something, right? And like, what tip would you give to somebody that's like right on the fence? They're like, maybe they're cash flow positive in their business, but they they're so nervous to hire out somebody because they don't feel like that person's going to do it as well as them. So, like, what's one tip that you'd give to somebody right now to you know pull the trigger? I know, I think you you gave a little link or something like that for the Empire Builders where they get like some credit to hire somebody out, you know, yeah, so that's basically it. free cash for them to at least try it out, you know, for a little bit. So if you can go into that. Yeah, I'll let you have the link. I forget what it is. I think it's freeup.com slash empire builder. It'll be no, whatever it is. It'll be down in the description, guys. Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing that I see is people don't look at it as an investment because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. You're investing time now to get a lot more time back later. And yes, you can keep doing it now and, and you can continue to make money. And there are plenty of solo operations that make good money. But if you at some point you're going to hit that wall and if you haven't spent the time along the way to make those investments, to try new things, you're not going to have that time down the line, whether it's time for expansion time for your family, whatever it is. And you have to keep in mind, no one has a 100% hiring record. It doesn't exist. You're going to make mistakes along the way and you have to learn up from those mistakes. You have to focus on what you can control, focus on your process, your system. When you make a bad hire, go back to the process. How can I set expectations better? How can I, what new interview questions can I ask? Really focus on what you can control because there's so much out there you can't from personal issues to things popping up out of nowhere, those things are gonna happen. Focus on what you can control and long-term, you're gonna have a lot of success, not only hiring, but it'll lead to success in your business. Yeah, I always tell people that and it's such a common saying, but it's like, you wanna be the one working on your business, right? Not like in the weeds. Like I even tell people at some point, like we we as marketers, our e-commerce businesses, we love running our own Facebook ads, we love running our own Google ads, but you're gonna be a lot better off in the long run, if you can hire somebody that's a, basically a professional at that already and can handle that for you, right? Instead of you wasting all the time trying to learn it yourself, you know what I mean? Because like I, the way I look at it is like I have 40, let's say you work in your business 40 hours a week. Like imagine duplicating yourself, you know, now you have 80 hours a week if you hire somebody full time, 
you know? And I think you gave like a crazy stat, like how many VAs did you have that are working for you? So like, it's you and your business partner and all the VAs, like how much billable time they're actually using. Yeah, they bill around 800 hours a week to me. Like, look at that guys, that's insane, right? Like I trying to do that yourself. I wanted to. <laughs> exactly, that's what I mean. It's like you have to look at it as an advantage and there's gonna be like a learning process that these people have to go through, but I'm telling you, until I let go of my businesses, that's how you scale. That's how you, you scale a business. You you cannot be the only one doing it and, and you know, trusting people as well. That's part of it. Like that's like just like we just talked about, you know, you every business has to trust people with sensitive data. It's not just, you know, not just us. So um, I'm gonna be respectful of your time. Any final words for anybody uh, here listening right now? Yeah, I would just encourage you to not give up. Whether you use free up or not, if you do use free up, me and my team are there to help. We never wanna shove freelancers down your throat. We wanna get you that right fit that's actually helping you. So if you're struggling, whether it's an issue with the VA or it's just something on your end that you haven't been able to overcome or something that you haven't been able to figure out yet, tell us, we're there. We, we've helped thousands of businesses go from working inside of their business and creating just that job for themselves to getting to the point where they can expand. And it's about focusing on the process, focusing on what you can control, and sometimes just asking for help and learning from other people's experiences. Mm -hmm. I also recommend my ebook, The 10 Common Most Mistakes of Outsourcing, all mistakes that I have personally made that I wish that someone back in the day had handed me this ebook because it would have saved me a lot of time and money. So if you're nervous, check out my mistakes um, and it should help you avoid them going forward. Yeah, so everything will be down in the description below, guys. I believe, like I said, I think you, you, you have that special link. We'll put that in there. Uh, we'll put his ebook down there and also his client expectation thing because I want to check that out as well. But Nathan, thank you so much for uh, taking some time here and uh, joining us and dropping some knowledge, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. I always love talking hiring.